to the end and the last day of this camp. But this is not the last day of God's working and moving in our lives. It only just begun. I said it only just begun. We've been talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. Talking about worship. Talking about making decision. Right decision. We talk about... Uh, Making a good, the right choice, paying the price. We we talk about being organized, put our lives in order, building the altar of the Lord. And last night it was a showdown. God sent the fire. I just would like to say this: there is no difference. Between you and I, than Elijah. Oh, nobody got that. Oh, Elijah is a prophet. Yes. But your position is greater than Elijah. You're the son of God. Sometimes we look at people and we admire them. For the great things they have done for the Lord. But in reality is. The God that moves in their heart. Is the same God that is moving in your own heart. The only difference is that. Elijah made a decision. And that decision. He has put his life on the line. He was willing to lost everything. Even to the point of death. In exchange of the glory of God. So I would like you to consider today. The song that goes this way. It is no secret. What God can do. What is done for others. He will do for you. If you allow God. To do it. For you. I was wrestling in my spirit. <coughs> Of what I'm going to preach this morning. Being this is the last day. I came across um, the chapter 7 of the book of John. When Jesus stood in front of the crowd. In the last day of the great feast. He cried out and said. Is there anyone thirst among you? Let him come unto me and drink. Water is refreshing. Water is rejuvenating. Water is purifying. Water is cleansing. We will be in trouble if we run out of water. Out from his belly, out from his innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. Water. There is a reservoir in your spirit that the Holy Spirit has dug in and fill it with such a marvelous water of the word, water of revelation, water of the glory of God, water of the power and the anointing of the Lord. But it is useless if we don't allow it to flow. Water that is not flowing is stagnant. Water that is stagnant is not clean. We have soaked everything for the past three days. We, literally, we sat at the table of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I've been ministered to. I will never be the same again. As I preach to you, I'm preaching to myself. There's something that happened in my life, fresh and new. That I will chew it for many days. Something that I have experienced before. But it is energized even more. What we have been hearing is not a new thing. What God has been speaking to us is not a new thing. We have heard that 
over and over and over and over again. Action is necessary. When there is a decision, what follows after is action. So therefore, Jesus said, if you're thirsty, come unto me and drink. But the last day of the feast is the Feast of Tabernacle. The Feast of Tabernacle, they celebrate that year after year to commemorate their wandering in the wilderness. During the time of the Feast of the Tabernacle, they will, the Israelites will live in boots. Because during the time that they were marching in the wilderness, they lived in tents. Even the glory of God was in tent called the tabernacle. So the great feast was the feast after the harvest of the first fruit. The gathering of the wheat. It's a feast, festivity of rejoicing, of thanksgiving for the abundant harvest that God has released to the people of God. I don't know about you, but I have a great harvest in the past three days here in this place. My, my cup is running over. My, barns, my barn is bursting open. I cannot contain it. The harvest has come in. I have tasted the goodness of God fresh and new. I have experienced once again the glory of the Lord, the power of His might. But that's not what I'm going to preach today. That's just a prelude. But I'm going to talk about, remember when Jesus resurrected from the dead. In the book of Luke, um, chapter 24. Two men walking on the road to Emmaus. They have just witnessed that terrible th thing that took place outside the gate of Jerusalem. The one that they thought who will be the deliverer. The one that they expect to become the Messiah. The one that will establish the kingdom of God and wipe out the kingdom of Rome is now hanging on the tree. The last time this Hear them say, it is finished. In their mind, they thought, Jesus accept defeat. They hang their head down. They were hurting. They were grieving. All of their hopes and expectation was crushed to the ground. The last thing that they saw, he gave up his ghost. And he died. They witnessed him being taken up the cross, wrapped in a linen cloth, and laid on the tomb. All of their hopes are gone. Their dreams were shattered completely. Their future is now washed away under their feet. What a terrible feeling. But they have forgotten what Jesus said. Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will build it. I said last night, when God make a covenant, when God make a promise, he's bound to fulfill it. He will never renege or turn his back away from the promise he spoke to the people of God. When you hang on to it, when you believe it, when you steadfastly, you know, and firmly stand on the promises of God without wavering, you will see the fulfillment of what God has promised. And so these two men, after everything had happened in Jerusalem, they were going home. Their head was hanging down. This carriage, I hope no one among us here going home today, hanging our head down, defeated, overwhelmed by the problems we are facing in life. I want you to understand that God is bigger than all of your problems. God is bigger than all of your need. God is bigger than all of your challenges. 
Hallelujah. We need to lift up our head high. We cannot hang our head down. We are children of the Most High God. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He resides in us. We are the dwelling place of God. Hallelujah. And no weapons from against us shall prosper. As a matter of fact, I said, He will build you up and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. As a matter of fact, He said, I give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you have will bound it on earth, it's bound here on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loosen, it will be loosened up in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as it is in heaven, so be it here on earth. And as they were walking on the road to Emmaus, all of a sudden, out from nowhere, Jesus came along. Then Jesus came. The tempter's power is broken. <coughs> and Jesus heard them discussing the things that happened in Jerusalem. And uh, Jesus asked, what are you talking about? How come your faces are too long and you are discouraged and your head are hanging down? And they answered, are you not from Jerusalem? Did you not know what happened? They crucified the Son of God. They killed him. And Jesus began to expound to them the scripture concerning him from the book of Moses to the prophet. It is sad. It is really sad and painful to face the reality that we worship God, we honor God, yet we don't recognize God. Hello. Did you hear what I said? That's profound. It doesn't mean that you sing because you sing the song. You know the song. It doesn't mean just because you shed the tears a little bit. It's enough. The apostle Paul said, the passion of my life, the desire of my life, the craving of my heart, that I may know him, that I may experience him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. Sometimes we pray, but we don't even know whom he whom we are praying for. I would like to stress it tonight. It is your, today, it's your responsibility to go deeper in your relationship with God. It is your responsibility to go deeper in your understanding who God is. Your prayer and your worship will never go higher above and beyond your knowledge and understanding of God. That why, that's why Isaiah said in chapter 41, have you not known have you not heard the everlasting God, the creators of the ends of the earth? Take time to know him. We go into service Sunday after Sunday and we go home. We know the people that sit next to us. We can even remember the clothes they wear. But did we ever recognize that Jesus Christ was there. That's a provoking question. Just because you memorize John 3.16, it doesn't mean you know him. The best place and the best time to know him it's in a time when you're desperate, when everything is disintegrating under your feet, when you are no longer able to stand on your own. Uh, that's the time to experience God. In your desperation, the Bible said the poor man cried and the Lord hear, hears him and delivered him from all of his fear. My last message today, today don't be so lazy to increase your knowledge and understanding of him. It means take time to read and meditate of the word of God. This is the one that will tell you who God is. 
This is the one that will reveal to you the path to getting acquainted and being intimate with God. Jesus said, I am the way. If you do not know the way, you are lost. You are in deep trouble. But Jesus said, I am the way. Get to know the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And as they were walking, Jesus began to expound. At this time, they still didn't recognize him. They were walking side by side, rubbing elbow. Yet still, they didn't recognize him. What a terrible thing. What a sad thing. Oh, my God. Thank you. We go, our, our, we go out of our way to get to know a friend. We spend two, how many ringgits to have a time of fellowship at Starbucks? Hello. To get to know our friend. But you know what? Your best friend is Jesus. He's a friend that stick closer than a brother. He's a friend that stay closer than a brother. And as they were walking, it did not even dawn on them. Where did this guy get all of this knowledge and understanding? And as they walk, you know, it's toward the sunset already. They arrive into the village of Emmaus. And Jesus was pretending to proceed. But the two men said, stay here. It's already night time. Hallelujah. It's dangerous. Stay here and tomorrow you can proceed to your journey. Jesus comply. Hallelujah. Have you ever invited him? Stay here, Jesus. Take time with me. Spend time with me. And so they served dinner. They sat on the table. As that's the custom of Jesus, he took the bread and he giving thanks. After giving thanks, he broke it. And the Bible said, their eyes were open. I pray to God that in these past few days that our eyes of our understanding was open and to see the majestic glory of God and understand the awesome power of the Lord and to recognize the purpose of God and the will of God for your life as far beyond anything else can compare. I pray to God that our eyes will be open that Jesus is the solution to your problem, that Jesus is the answer to your need, that no one can stick with you through thick and thin except Jesus Christ. He will never turn his back away from you. He will hold with you even to the darkest moment of your life. David said, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Be sure he is with you. Don't ever go out there not knowing he is with you. American Express few years ago has this commercial don't leave home without it. Have you heard that before? Don't leave home without it. Well, let me tell you, you don't need a credit card. All what you need is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Don't leave home without it. And do you know about the testimony of the two guys? The two guys said, isn't it no wonder of God that while he was talking unto us, Something is burning in our hearts. Hallelujah. The coldness was gone. Something boiling inside. Hallelujah. Didn't you feel that? While we were walking with him. <coughs> As he is expounding to us the word of God. His word like fire. Burning in our heart. So my message today is this. After this cup, keep the fire of God burning. 
the fire came down from heaven has been released to us we experience the power of god keep the fire burning do not extinguish it the devil will come to put up your fire my God, guard it with all your light. Uh, protect it with all your might. Uh, because you need the fire of God. Uh, let the burning in your heart continue. Hallelujah. To increase. Set your heart aflame for God. Set your heart be in tune and fired up for God. Hallelujah. Be delivered from lukewarmness. Be delivered from apathy. Be delivered from worldliness. Let the fire of God burning. What does it mean? The fire of God will continue to consume the filth and the dirt in our lives so that the fire will continue to burn. But you know what? Fire will die if you don't feed it. Fire will die if you don't feed it. When I was living in Michigan, USA, we have um, a fireplace. We were invited by one of our parishioners to go to their house on one winter time to do skiing. Their house is heated by an iron stove. <coughs> the wife said to the husband, put more logs in the stove. Enough to keep the house warm until we come back. We're going we're going to be gone for three hours. Put more firewood. It will be crazy for you. Not to stop by the gasoline station while you are driving when the gates is already pointing to empty. In other words, you are, you are running out of fuel. Hello. You are running out of energy. And soon, you are going to be die. You will die on the road. So we need to feed the fire. What are the firewood? Number one, build the altar. What did I say? This past few, right? The altar represents prayer. You want to get to know God? Spend time in prayer. Not prayer of begging, asking, for, but prayer of spending time in the presence of God. Experiment this, beloved. Come into the presence of God, not saying anything, but just sit, sit, sit down, sit down in the presence of God and just say, Lord, I'm listening, speak to me. You know the problem to many of us, we talk too much and we don't listen. Somebody said to me, oh God never listened to me, he never answered my prayer. Well, you never give him a chance. After you gap, 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 and you talk up and I say, and then you wonder why. That's why the first night, my message says, who do, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. What does it mean to wait? It doesn't mean to sit down doing nothing. But to bask in the presence of God. To dwell in the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pass beyond begging. God knows your need. He said in Matthew 6, your heavenly father knows what you need of. Are you not more, more precious than lilies of the field and the palace of the air? If the heavenly father take care of them, how much more shall he will not take care of you? For you are more precious than those. Feed the fire of prayer. We only come to the Lord in prayer because we need something. I said to my children, I don't want this to, when they were young, I don't want this to happen all the time. That you only come to me because you need something from me. Would you ever consider, I told them, that it will be a joy to me and that you come into my presence, not asking for anything, but just want to spend in my presence. 
Hello? And then if you don't ask, because I delight in your presence, I will, at the end of the day, I will say, what do you need? You don't even need to ask. You don't even need to pray, beg. Feed the fire with worship. I'm not saying worship on Sunday morning or coming thing, but every day of your life have a time set aside for worship. Hello. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name shall be praised. We put up a show when we come to church. Because people are watching. But the most beautiful time to spend alone with God. When no one is watching and we are not impressing anybody. All what we want is to bask in the glory of the Lord. Lost in the presence of God. And you begin to feel the embrace of the Lord. And you begin to feel that He's kissing your cheek. And He said, I love you. I care about you. Hallelujah. That's more worth than any million bucks that you can get. Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. In His right hand, there are pleasures forevermore let us increase the intensity of our worship thirdly the word of God how many of you have a systematic Bible reading but I mean systematic is that If you're going to read the book of John, you finish the book of John. One man said, Lord, I don't have any time. I'm too busy. But I need a word from you. He said, give me a verse, Lord. So he closed his eyes. And he said, Lord, give me a verse. And he read, and Judas went and betrayed the Lord. Oh, I'm going to get a betray the Lord. So he closed the book again. And I said, Lord, give me a word. So he opened the Bible. And the verse said, what you're planning to do, do it quickly. Do you follow me? Oh, I don't like that. So the third time. He opened up the Bible. I said, Lord, give me a word. Boom. And it reads, and Judas went out and hung himself. <laughs> we all went to school. We all went, we all study. If you, didn't, if you don't study the textbook, if you don't learn, you will never pass. You will not graduate. The Apostle Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I study my textbook. I passed the examination. And now I have graduated. I have my diploma. The Bible said, Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded up from the mouth of God. Meditate in the word of God. Make it a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. But you know what? You become serious reading the Word of God. The Word of God is sharper than two in its word. That's why many Christians that they want to read the Word of God because they are confronted with the reality that is in their heart and they don't want to give it up. So they just shove it away and they wonder why. How come I'm not victorious? How come I'm not overcoming? How come I'm defeated? How come I'm not progressing in my Christian walk? How come I'm easily tempted? How come, how come, how come, how come? If you don't eat, you lost strength. If you don't eat, you got sick. 
meditate in the word of God. He said, Let this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Meditate therein day and night. And that it did not end there. And then he said, observe to do everything that God has commanded you. And at the end, and see, shall, you shall have, you shall prosper and have good success. Not just success, but good success. The more you put fire, firewood in the fire, the more it burns. The prodigal, uh, the story of the five foolish virgin. They were waiting for the bridegroom. They did not bring extra oil. The bridegroom was delayed in coming. All of the oil in their lamp was exhausted. And at the middle of the night, the trumpet says, the voice was heard. Arise, the bridegroom has come. And they were trimming their lamps and it would not light. Why? There is no oil. And he came to the five wise virgin. He said, give us something. I said, no way. It's just enough for us. The marriage will be long. We cannot afford to lose our fire. Go out there and buy. But when he came back, it was too late. Hello. Be wise as a serpent. Be harmless as a dove. Feed the fire. Next. Obedience. Obedience is a fuel that makes your heart, the fire of God burn inside of you. Because to obey is better than sacrifice. It is not how much you know, but how much you apply what we know. Hallelujah. We are not supposed to be hearers of the word only, but doers of the word. It is in action and doing the word of God uh, and responding to the word of God that miracle will take place. Uh, supernatural will happen. Peter said, Lord, if, this, if, if that is really you, bid me come to the water. The rest of the disciples said, Peter, you better think it wise. That's water. You will sink. But he said, come. The word of God will overrule everything in your life. And he stepped out of the boat. And he walked on the water. Action. Responding. Obedience. You don't need to know everything. Just practice what you know. Our life should be established in the Word of God. You know what? I'm not against gadget. <coughs> but I would rather have my Bible. So when I'm listening, I can write notes on the side of it. If you see my Bible, I have a lot of footnotes. When I'm listening people to preach, a revelation comes, and I write it down next to the verse. Have a notebook, a journal. Write down what you prayed for. Write down all the promises that you're believing for. Because we cannot trust our memory. That's why God said to Habakkuk, write the vision in the tablet and make it simple so that they may run with it. Keep the fire of God in your heart burning. Meaning to say, we must give up anything in our lives that will dampen the fire and Kill it. The Spirit of God, the anointing of the Lord, the revelation of God 
is so exciting. Every time I read the word of God, I would say, I read this before. Wow, how come I didn't see it before? And the Lord said, because now the eyes of your understanding is open. Next, fire, be a witness. Jesus said, don't hide your light. Put it in a bushel. <coughs> Put people to see. We are so loud and excited in the church. But when we go out there in the world, we are as deep and dumb as could be. The people that work with us doesn't even know that we belong to Grace Assembly. Do not hide your Christianity. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me, you will be ashamed of my father and with his angel. Let your light shine. And the only way it shines is that because the fire is burning and because there is fuel, it will rage it, rage it through you. While I was living in San Francisco, my wife sent me to, to do errand. You know the, the, the monthly the monthly cycle of a woman. You understand what I'm talking about? And I said, honey, can you go to the store and buy me some pads? I said, darling, I'll drive you. Can you just come with me? I don't feel good. I really don't like to go out the house. I feel, you know, dirty. Come on. I know you love me, so could you do that? And he was doing like this. Please, how can you resist that? But I was a little bit upset because there was no parking in front of the store. And if a policeman come and you are not there, $50 is the ticket. <coughs> so I walk into the store a little bit upset, a little bit embarrassed, because I don't want to go to the counter. My wife said, look, look for the one that has a wings. I said, honey, please go with me. She said, no, you go. It will be easy. She said, when you go, go inside the store, just walk, see, and count three aisles. One, two, three. Turn to the right. At the end of the aisle, you can find it there. What he did not, she did not know, every now and then, they move the product somewhere else. I stood in front, <coughs> toothpaste, toothbrushes. There was nothing there with the wings. <laughs> I got so upset. Okay. So I, I turned around. Meanwhile, I kept looking outside if there's a policeman. I was going up from aisle to aisle. All of a sudden, this lady security guard was following me. Mind you, I was upset. <coughs> Mind you, I was not happy. Mind you, I was embarrassed. I finally realized, why is this woman following me? So I turned around. With a nasty tone, I said, Madam, is there anything wrong? I am not a shoplifter. And the woman smiled at me and said, there's nothing wrong. Why are you following me? I said, what are you looking for? I said, pads for my wife. Oh, come follow me. <laughs> it was against the wall, the end of the aisles in the store. Then he looked at me and he said, I was following you because I would like to ask you a question. 
I said, I don't guarantee I can answer your question. I said, smile. I said, and said, are you a Christian? <laughs> <coughs> I was thinking about, am I going to say I am? My attitude was not right. Hello? But I cannot lie. I said, yes. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I love the Lord. I said, why did you ask? Because the moment you walk on into the door, I feel the presence of God. Mind you, I was not happy. <laughs> Hello. I was upset. But you know what? Regardless of the glory of God will still come out. I end up praying for her. <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is the fire of evangelism, the fire of witnessing is important. Every time I share the gospel to somebody, I feel like I get born again over and over again. The excitement of my salvation experience in 1960 become alive. Feed the fire by lifting up Jesus Christ who said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Next, the fire of giving. Here we are again. When we hear about giving, we always talk about money. In reality, God doesn't need our money. What he needs is you and I. Because when he got you, he got all your money. Never rob God. Because a thief is being locked up in jail. I would rather suffer with nothing to eat than rob God of what belongs to him. Because when you rob God, that will dampen the fire in your heart. 1968, I was in a church. I only have 20 cents. The bus fare was 10 cents going to church, 10 cents going home. I told my wife, you don't go to church. I need to go to church because I'm needed there. Okay. So I have left 10 cents in my pocket. They took the offering. And the Lord said to me, Give what is in your pocket. I put my hands in my pocket. I said, no way, Lord. I'm not going to walk home. So I hold that 10 cents in my hand. And the Spirit of God said, give it. I said to the Lord, what can the 10 cents do? And the Lord said, what? Can the might of the widow do? It's not what it can do, but how you obey. And I said, God, I'm going to walk 14 kilometers. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I am not going to walk. The ushers, I think, knew that God was talking to me. He was standing there with the offering bag. <laughs> and I said to myself, go away. <laughs> like he was waiting for me to do something. And all of a sudden the Lord said, if you obey me, I will show you what I can do. My heart was repulsive. I took that sweaty 10 cents. And I put it in the basket and the, the lady turned around and went at the back. After the service, people that live in the area where we live, 
normally we all travel together. So they said, come on, Ray. Let's ride together. I said, you go ahead. I'm still waiting for somebody. The reason I was, I was letting them go because I don't want them to <coughs> see me walking. I'm not going to ride the jeepney or the bus with, without my fare. They might not pay for me. I'm going to be in, embarrassed. So I said, go ahead. I will follow. So I was standing there and at the door of the church. The janitor said, you better go home now. And because, you better leave because I need to, cl- clo- to lock the door because uh, I need to go home and have lunch. I will come back at 5 o'clock for the evening service. I said, okay. So st- stood outside. I was looking to the corner. I said, there are still two young people <coughs> talking there. I don't want to walk while they're there. As I was standing there, a Mercedes Benz passed by. The wife rolled the window down. And I said, Ray, come on, ride with us, we'll take you home. I said, no, you are going to opposite direction. I'm going home in the opposite direction. No, we are going to the same direction we are going. We have a business to take her. So the wife got up the front seat. And then you sit down with my husband. So I sat inside and said, the Lord, he said, your dime cannot give you a joy of riding a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> and then while we were riding, I said, are you in a hurry? I said, no. Oh, we are hungry. We will have lunch first. Come, go with us. We'll treat you for a lunch. We went to a very nice Chinese restaurant. They left over the packet and they gave it to me. So they, we drove. I said, drop me off in the corner. So they dropped me off. The guy, the husband came off from the driver's seat, gave me a hug, shook my hand. I felt something. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> oh. It was not a coin. It was a paper. A paper. <laughs> of course, we had each other. I waved. They left. When I couldn't see them in the room, I turned around and I opened it. It was 50 pesos or 50 ringgits. And the Lord said, see, you give me a dime, I give you 50. Never... Never disobey giving. We cannot outgive God. The tithes and the offering is put by God there to test our hearts uh, of our priorities. And I can go on and on, but what I could remember is this: keep the fire of God burning. It is our responsibility to feed fuel to keep the fire burning. You know what? Once the fire dies, it's hard to kindle it again. It's hard to start all over again. Keep the fire of God burning. The fire came down last night. It's been burning in my heart. Laying down there in bed, I feel like I'm about to explode. I said, God, thank you. Thank you. And the Lord said to me, tomorrow is a different thing. This is today. You need to do something tomorrow to keep the fire burning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Out from your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And David said, you anointed, anointed my head with oil. My cup is running over. Hallelujah. The fire of God.
the water of God represent the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Throughout the few nights, God has been speaking to us. After today, it's now our responsibility to put into action what God has revealed to us. We are going to be accountable to that which we have learned. It will be better off that we do not know anything. Because we are not responsible to the things we do not know. But once you know about it, you have a responsibility and accountability to that which God has given you. Let us be wise. Cultivating the fire. Keep the fire of God burning. Shall we stand up? Mm -hmm.